So a military coup has transpired in Gabon, all right? And uh, this is obviously barely a month after the coup in Niger. Now, Gabon, just like Niger, is a, a former French colony. Um, you know, they, these are both countries that use um, the CFA franc, which is, or, or a variation of it, which is, you know, basically the, um, um, a, a colonial currency that, that uh, France put into place so France can control uh, these countries um, uh, economically and, and through their monetary policy. And so just to show you on the map, right, uh, when we're talking about... Um, former French colonies revolting against France, which is really what this is, right? It's, it's stunning. Um, and, and this is just within the span of a month. But um, if, if we look at it through... Yeah, there you go. So the, the, these are all countries that used to be uh, under a French rule. Some of them under a, pr a protectorate like Morocco. Um, uh, and, you know, it, these are basically just categorizing the years of independence. But they're all under French control. And so just in the span of three years now, I want you to listen very carefully. In the span of three years, this is the eighth coup against um, a government, right? Uh, in, in a country that was formerly under French control. And, and obviously, if you, you understand neocolonialism, then you should understand that they were still under French control. Okay, so this is the eighth coup in, a, in an African country that used to be a French colony. So it's also an eighth coup against France, right? That's how you should read this situation and analyze the situation. It's, it's the eighth coup in three years against France. That's what it really is. Because these governments are puppets, they're stooges. You know, Bazoum in Niger is a stooge. Bongo, who, Ali Bongo, who's the president um, in, in Gabon, <laughs> or no longer, I should say, is a, is a stooge, right? These are French and American stooges. So, I mean, eight, eight, eight countries. This is wild. This is wild. I mean, just look at the map, right? We've had, um, so we've had Niger and, uh, and Gabon in the span of a month. We've had uh, Mali. We've had Chad, uh, we've had Burkina Faso, we've had Guinea. I actually, we put together a map on In Context um, just, just to show the, the African coups in the last couple of years. This is wild, right? This is wild. Now, forget Sudan, put Sudan, uh, um, you know, Sudan aside for a second because Sudan w w wasn't a French colony. But you can see the majority of these countries, they were under French rule. And now those governments, the stooges that were put in place, are gone. That, that is what I love about the, the energy here that is coming from these young, right? These, these young mid-20s, mid-30s, um, you know, guys my age, African men in the military who are just turning, you know, the, everything on its head. And keep in mind, the ones that led the coup in Niger last month and the one that, ones that led the coup in Gabon, they're, they're from the presidential guard. Like, these are the guys who are meant to make sure that there is no coup. Actually, there was an attempted coup in, in Niger in 2021, and, and that was actually put down by the same presidential guard that, that did the coup last month, okay? You know, just to show you what's going on, uh, uh, obviously, you know, the French are not happy. <laughs> the, the first thing they did is they put out a statement. Listen. La France condamne le coup d'état militaire qui est en cours au Gabon. Et la France surveille avec beaucoup d'attention l'évolution de la situation sur place et réaffirme son souhait que le résultat de l'élection, lorsqu'il sera connu, puisse être respecté. Donc, nous yeah, surveillons yeah, ça yeah. avec attention. La France... Because he's talking about an election because there, there was an election and the moment they, they announced the result, which was obviously, you know, Bongo, uh, who, who won it, they, the military just stepped in and said, no, we are annulling the, ele the election results. And I'll play you the video. This was the announcement of the coup by the presidential guard. Les élections générales du 26 août 2023, ainsi que les résultats tronqués, sont annulés. <laughs> so one, one of you in the comments said, um, France can just save time by copying and pasting their, com their comments about Niger and replacing Niger with the current coup country. Yeah, <laughs> they absolutely could. Um, 
you saw I, I i paused it when they were celebrating right so the, these are members of the presidential guard they're celebrating the coup now obviously you know because they're the ones who who, who undertook it uh you might think that it's just them I, I, it's not just them just like in niger what happened the second there was a coup yet all these people like uh flooding the streets um and celebrating and it's the same in gabon right in in libreville in the capital let me show you a couple of videos here's just a few that i picked in the last uh, few minutes all right, let me show you some more. Look, they're so ce they're celebrating with the soldiers. <laughs> All right, here's some more. All right, that's the same one. That's the same one from earlier, right? It says on the poster, it says uh, Ali pour tous, right? So Ali Bongo, the president for everyone. It's a campaign poster. And it's, it's kind of ridiculous, right? Because the, the, the defining factor about all these presidents, these stooges, as, as they, they should be called, is that they're, they're actually for nobody except themselves, right? Like, you know, there, there has to be, um, and, I, and I say this also about, about former uh, so Arab countries that are former French or British um, uh, colonies, you know, there has to be some accountability because when, when you say like these countries were colonized against their will and so on, fine. But when, when you talk about neocolonialism, you have to remember that there's a tiny percentage, even one person, it could be one person, the president, who is collaborating with the former colonial power, right? The stooge. And so that's, that's who is being removed here, right? Um, again, more videos. <laughs> you get the idea. You get the idea. Now, why is Gabon impor important? I mean, you know, with, with, with Niger, I mean, it was kind of obvious, like, the relationship with, with France is, is um, it's about uranium, mostly. Obviously, the size of the country is also a factor, but, um, you know, uh, th this France-Afrique or Franc-Afrique is, is like, it is neocolonialism. It, it was um, a masquerade after, um, you know, uh, all these countries post-World War II were getting their independence. The French solution to that was kind of, you know, get a, um, a whole, get all these rich businessmen in in french businessmen in africa together and their contacts and make a network of people uh, uh, and then put stooges in their place and then basically you can run africa um while while making it look like these countries are independent okay but lo look at look at the natural resources in gabon okay manganese diamonds gold uranium it's the largest leading producer of metal in Africa, uh, of, of, of the metal in Africa, and ranks sixth globally in, in annual manganese production, okay? Um, the northeastern region of Gabon it has huge iron ore deposits. When it comes to oil and gas, it's the sixth largest proven, um, it has the sixth largest proven deposits of oil on the continent. So, obviously, you, you, you're going to have, um, you know, as time goes on, and they, they're able to find more of these deposits, it'll fluctuate. But nevertheless, Gabon is top 10 in Africa, right? That doesn't change this fact. So um, it has an estimated uh, 3.6 billion barrels of oil reserves. Um, oil is Gabon's largest export, and it's the, the country's chief foreign exchange earner. Uh, crude oil accounts for about 96 of the country's total exports to the US, okay? Um, w which is enormous. I mean, really, really enormous. Um, and it has large deposits of natural gas, which are estimated to be over 28.3 billion cubic meters. So, you know, they're trying to diversify the economy and so on, but whatever, you know, the point is that uh, Gabon is very, very rich in resources um, to the point that its in entire economy depends on it uh, at this point, right? Again, just for those of you who are not too, you know, who need to brush up on your uh, um, uh, African, um, 
your, your African geography, Gabon is down here, okay, and Libreville on the coast right there. So, you know, the, this is again in the, right in the neighborhood. It's not it's not exactly in the in the Sahel, obviously not. You know, Sahel is up here. We're talking about Chad, Niger, Mali, uh, basically, um, you know, in the middle of of of, uh, of the Sahara, but. And when we saw in these coups in the last couple of years, you know, Niger and then Burkina Faso and then uh, Mali and, and Chad, you know, they're all West African countries. But Gabon, nevertheless, um, is, you know, it's still got that relationship to France. It's in the neighborhood. We're not going to say it's in, uh, you know, exactly. Uh, um, it obviously, it doesn't border Niger, but it's in the same neighborhood. And it doesn't matter. You know, this whole region um, it was under French control. And now these coups... Uh, that are happening one after the other in the span of three years. How can you not see the the truth? Like the the, it, it's so obvious what's happening. It's so so obvious. Like this is actual decolonization. It's happening now. You know, it's not this like crap that they write in history books. Oh, it started in 1945, and it, no, 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 nothing happened in 1945. There's no decolonization. That's rubbish. Complete rubbish. This, this right now, you are seeing, you are witnessing and seeing decolonization. And I said that the other day with bricks, right? The, the formation, the creation of bricks, the expansion of bricks, and these coups on the sideline. And so, of course, what happens is that, um, you know, the African Union uh, and ECOWAS, what they do is they come and condemn these coups, and then they sanction the countries that have, that have um, experienced or under, undergone these coups. So now Niger, for example, is under sanctions. And, and just talking about Gabon, um, the, United, uh, the United Nations, unfortunately, they... they um, you know, they condemned the coup. I think it's a stupid. You, you shouldn't condemn these coups. These are good coups, right? Because these are the ones that actually have meaning and get rid of France. They get rid of the colonial and neo-colonial um, tentacle, right? <laughs> That's coming all the way from Paris into Africa. You should, you should encourage and celebrate them. And I want to I mention another thing here. You know, um, what France were saying... And, and the African Union and the United Nations is that, you know, you should respect the outcome of the elections, right? These, these were elections that, that took place in Gabon and uh, Ali Bongo won the elections. Okay, let me explain something. The Bongo, Ali Bongo, his father was also the president, okay? So in total, um, they, this family, the same family, have had power, have held power in Gabon for 53 years, okay? So again, uh, if, you'd like, if you'd like that in U.S. terms, this same family have been in power in Gabon. Um, you know, during the same period, you've had nine presidents in the United States. Nine presidents, okay? So, yeah, that's a long time. That's a long time. And it's not democratic at all. Uh, and, um, you know, everybody knows that. And that's why people are out on the streets because they actually support this coup. They know that what they were having, you know, what, what they had before and what they, they were being given, uh, you know, is, not, is nothing. Uh, this rampant corruption because the French make sure that you have this corruption and support these countries. You know, one of the main policies of Franck Afrique, of, of French neocolonialism, is that if you put a stooge in power, if we get this guy in power, you know, like, we'll tell them, okay, you, you get military assistance and protection, right, from, from coups, from coup d'etats. Um, in exchange, you make sure that French corporations um, can access your market, meaning we control your resources, okay? We, the French corporations are basically the French state, yes? So, and, and also France will have first refusal of rights when it comes to, to you know, whatever minerals um, or oils and gases are discovered in the country. Okay, so France controls the country, period. Now, I want, to say, I want to say something about this dynasty, right? 53 years of the same uh, family. And they say you must respect the election results in Gabon, right? It doesn't matter that Ali Bongo's father was president. He is also the president, and he just won the election. Really? Well, it's funny because they don't speak that way when it comes to Syria, right? You have on the left here Hafez al-Assad, who is the, the former uh, president of Syria. When he died, you had his son Bashar al-Assad uh, on the right who took over. And so when it comes to Syria, the argument is that, well, you cannot, you cannot support Bashar al-Assad and you, you, must, you must get rid of him and oust him from power because his father was the president. So because Hafez al-Assad was the president... Bashar al-Assad cannot be the president because this is not democracy, right? This is illegitimate. 
you cannot just pass on the presidency from one father, you know, uh, uh, from one father to their son. Well, I don't see anyone saying this about Gabon, right? I don't see anyone complaining in the State Department or in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office or, you know, where in the African Union or in the United Nations about Ali Bongo being the president in Gabon. As, as a matter of fact, on the contrary, they want him to be the president. They, they want him to be the president. They, they want the same family that has been in power in Gabon for 53 years to, to remain in power. And yet when it comes to Syria, no, this is unacceptable. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could also mention, of course, in the United States, uh, you know, George Bush, uh, uh, a senior and then and junior. But I mean, the, the, the problem with that is that you had Bill Clinton in between. So people, you know, for some reason, they don't, they don't view that as, as, as uh, nepotism or corruption or anything. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's still, you still have political dynasties in the United States. Even right now, you know, uh, RFK Jr. is trying to get elected and he keeps bringing up his... Uh, JFK's name, he keeps bringing up his uncle's name to sell himself. Now, I, I'm not going to get into that because, uh, you know, the, it's, it, the stronger argument about this is right here with, with Syria, right? Because they're trying to, um, they're going for a regime change in Syria based on this argument that the father and the son can't be president. And yet you have father and son being president in the United States. And in, and in the case of Gabon, which just underwent this coup, I mean, it's just, it's so obviously corrupt and no one supports it. And yet the African Union and ECOWAS and, and the United Nations and the State Department and the French for, Foreign Office, you know, uh, Foreign Ministry will all get together and say, oh, you must respect the outcome of the elections. Yeah, okay, sure thing. <laughs> you know, uh, just as a side note on, uh, about Syria and speaking of coups, in Syria, you had, Syria was also under French control, so it's very relevant. And it was, uh, you know, it was a mandate at the time. Again, they use these different words to kind of hide what it is. It's still, it's, it's, it's colony, okay? It was under French rule for, for many decades. And, um, uh, you know, basically, when it comes to, to, to Syria, the, when the French left and had, you know, um, and, and had done screwing with the country and carved it up and everything into 50 pieces. Um, there was a lot of instability in Syria because Syria had been, you know, had become fr from one country. They had carved it up into Lebanon and into uh, Israel and, and, you know, Jordan and just rendered it very weak and, and unstable. It's un unstable. And so for a long time, you had this instability where you would have one guy who's president for 24 hours because he just did a coup. And then 24 hours later, I'm, I'm, I literally mean 24 hours, like actually 24 hours. You had someone who was president for 24 hours and then another one as well. That, that's how many coups you had, like so much instability. If you look at a graph, you know, or rather a timeline of presidencies in Syria, there, there comes a point, and it's exactly this after World War II uh, leading up to the 60s, where you, you cannot even distinguish who was president because it's just a bunch of colors, you know, um, jumbled together. And so what, what Assad, his father, did when he came to power, also through a coup, <laughs> you know, military officer's coup, he brought stability. Whether people like it or don't like it, and, and, and you know, you can certainly make criticisms. That's another issue. But I'm talking about stability. He brought that, right? And he brought that after the French had weakened the country. The same thing with Gaddafi. You know, Gaddafi brought stability. Uh, even Saddam Hussein, right? Also, you can make a lot of criticisms, but you, you cannot justify, you know, Iraq invasion. Um, he brought stability. So, you know, what, one of the things is that those coups... Um, you, they got rid of France, they got rid of French um, uh, influence in the country and brought stability. We'll see what happens in Gabon. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in Niger, but I think that the French, and I, I know for a fact that the French uh, and the Americans are trying very, very, very hard to, um, you know, uh, revert and undo the progress that they have made with these coups. Let me ask you a simple question. If, if the coup in Niger was bad for Niger, right? Um, why, you know, why do you think, or rather, re let me rephrase this again. I if the coup in Niger and the coup in Gabon, right, let's, let's put them together. If they weren't good for Niger, why do you think the Americans and the French would be trying so hard to undo them? Because they reduce French and American influence. This is a fact.
you know, and they'll try and sell it to you and say, oh, well, it's about fighting terrorism. That's what we only we only care about you, right? Like you, you need to pay for protection, right? <laughs> they should just put it that way. They'll, they'll make they'll make it sound like they're doing you a favor, right? We're, we're here to protect you from these terrorists, which, by the way, we we created, you know, through our our uh, um, terrorism and, and foreign policy. We, we, you need us. You need us. We, you need us for foreign aid. Like, like Emmanuel Macron, just the other day, he's saying, like, you know, these coups are bad for Niger because uh, Niger will not receive any more money through international uh, development assistance. What, what development? It's literally the poorest country on earth. Pick any fucking graph or, or chart you like or any, any index, right? Niger is at the bottom of the human development index, right? At the bottom, it's, it's the last country or the second last country. So what, what good is all this foreign assistance doing? Nothing, it does no good. It's just an excuse so they can control the country, right? Um, it doesn't even have its own currency. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't even have its own bloody currency. And then, and then the troops, right? We're here to help you. We're here to protect you. Now, with Gabon, it's a different issue because, you know, Gabon is not in the Sahel and they, 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 don't, they don't have this... Um, uh, you know, they, they, they can't sell this, this military point as much. But nevertheless, you know, it's, it's a country that, that is, whose resources are controlled by France, controlled by the West. Um, you have a one family at the top that has been put there as a stooge to control the country, control the population, and, and meanwhile receive kickbacks as they do that, right? This is the policy all over Africa and the policy of Franck Afrique. So, you know, I... I, I I, I do nothing but applaud these young, these young men, these young soldiers that have done these coups because they are taking back their country and kicking out the Frenchmen and the Americans. Period. Bravo, bravo les gars. Bravo. Bien fait les gars.